Hi, this is The Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about keyword research for Google Play. All right, so yesterday I talked a little bit about the difference between you know, searchers and browsers. So you know, a lot of times when we develop our apps or we develop products of any kind, we're thinking in terms of the browser. You know, somebody who picks it up and starts using it, you know, they, we don't think about how they actually find the product. You know, and I made the, uh, you know, I compared it to software back in the 90s, and specifically Mavis Beacon teaches typing, how you know, when you go to Best Buy back in the day, you'd have like a couple rows of software, you know, with, with shelf space. Right, and you would just go, you know, you would just browse through and find something that looks interesting. But with you know the app store, if the app store was actually a physical store and we each had like a little bit of shelf space, that thing would be miles long, right? It would be impossible for anybody to find anything, which is why we have to think about search and, and optimize things in, in a you know so people can find them, which is not really as creators of something, it's not something we like to think about a lot because because it's boring, we just want the best. You know, user experience, so we don't have to you know worry so much about how they actually going to get to where we need to do, right? And one of the ways that people find things, you know, in fact, you know, one of the big core tenets of App Store optimization or ASO is you know is keyword research and doing you know and searching for keywords. Now, I want to start by saying I am not an expert with keyword research, right? I don't. I'm, you know, I don't do things in a scientific way. I mean, we'll, we'll change keywords out, we'll try new things, we'll, we'll measure them using App Annie, we'll do different things to, to see how they go. But I, don't, I know lots of other people who are much more methodical about it and they have really good YouTube channels. Um, if you check out appmasters.co, uh, you know, Steve P. Young does a really good one over there. There's a lot of other ones where they'll take spreadsheets and they'll run them through like Mobile Action and Sensor Tower and they'll actually, you know, scientifically you know, change things here and there. I don't do that. Right? What I do is when I'm looking for keywords, I'm trying to find new things which I think are uncrowded and do a bit of testing. Right? In the past, I've used tools like Sensor Tower, I've used uh, MobileAction.co, I've used um, Longtail Pro, things like this, but I find them to be a bit expensive and I don't usually get a lot of value out of them. So today, I want to focus specifically on Google Play keyword research and also on using free tools. So some of the things I do. And like I said, I'm not an expert. You guys might have some better you know, methods out there than I do. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tell you what I do, right? And you guys can let me know, you know whether or not, you know, maybe it'll help you a little bit. So, and also Google Play is a lot, is a much different animal than iTunes. I mean, uh, the, the Apple App Store. I mean, iTunes Connect will ask you, you know, what are your keywords? You know, have that field there of 100 characters. So it's a lot, it's a lot easier. And with Google Play, you know, you have, your title, you have your short description, you have your description, all that kind of stuff. But a lot of the things you're going to rank for aren't even in that. So it, it so it's it's not exactly an exact science. It, well, I suppose an ex if you knew the algorithm, it would be an exact science. But a lot of us are guessing the algorithm. We know what Google tells us. You know, like if your app crashes a lot, it's going to be downgraded. If it's a lot of bad reviews, it's going to be downgraded. All that kind of stuff, right? But a lot of the other stuff we're guessing, right? So I'm going to talk about keywords, but keywords are not the be all and end all. They're just, you know, but they're, they're what we have to start with. So let me give you a, an example of why. So have a look at my screen over here. Now, if I go to Google Play, I'm going to the desktop console here, right? And I type in spy. I, yeah, I, I know I do this in a lot of videos. If I type in spy, you can see that my app, uh, Ear Spot, I'm sorry, Ear Agent Super Hearing comes up first, right? It still does. Now, the thing is, right, if I go into this, uh, back in July, I think it was back in July, we changed the name, we changed the description, we got rid of a lot of the words in the title and description because of changes in Google Play's policy, right? The app itself is like a hearing augmenting type thing, so we're either going to go towards hearing aid or go towards spy, so we went towards the spy route, so we were going on, you know, the keywords spy, the keywords eavesdrop, all this kind of stuff, right? And even though we removed it, the only place that's on our description here, let me just show you here, is right here. It was re previously called, you know, your agent, but it is not a spy device. That is the only place in this entire description, keyword, short description, where we use the word spy. And if you take a look over here, if I go over to our App Annie page, and by the way, if you're not using App Annie for the keyword tools, it's a really good free tool. They have paid things too, right? But I've never used any of them. And they are like, I mean, dude, man, they're really expensive. 
So if I go down here to the keywords ACO sec ASO section, and it will show me by default the location I'm in, which is United Kingdom. You see the, the keyword spy, the keyword agent is, is kind of ranking here. We got ear, ear spy. So we got a lot of you know keyword rank number one. If I go switch the location to the United States, you can see we got the same kind of thing here. You know, the, if we select spy, you can see it's you know number one, all this kind of stuff. So that's despite the fact that we're not using it in the title, we're not using it in the description. So, and the reason behind this is because it's mentioned a lot because it was part of our title, it was part of our marketing for so long that a lot of people use it in their reviews. So it's so we're still ranking really well for that. And I did a video on this back in February. It was video number 36 called the keywords that you don't control where I talked about a lot of things that we're ranking for that were never intentional. It was just, it was crazy and it was a lot to do with the reviews. So this is one of the big things you have to consider, right? Just because you get your keywords right doesn't mean you're gonna have success. There's gonna be a lot of things there, right? And the fact that this application is so established, right? That we, that we're, we still rank well for that keyword even though we're not using that keyword anymore. That just shows that if you wanna go for a keyword that's really saturated, that's going to be very difficult. So you have to start looking for things that are, that are not so mainstream. So let's go through a couple of these tools. So anyway, the reason I bring that up is just to say keywords aren't going to be the solution to all your problems, but when your app is just starting out, it's a thing you have to start with. I mean, it's the only thing that you have, right? You know, I mean, you have the, the keywords and descriptions, you can pay for advertising, all this kind of stuff. And the more crowded the app store gets, it's going to continue to be that way. And by the way, I don't think it's going to, my app is going to rate, you know, it's going to rank for the word spy forever, right? Because since we removed that from there, I mean, at some point, you know, people already don't mention those, those words anymore in the reviews and that's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And eventually it's, it's going to fall off from that spot, but we still kind of hold that, which is kind of a, <laughs> just still kind of nice. I'm still kind of chuffed with it, even, even though, because I was really scared when we had to change it. I thought, that's it, you know, the, the money maker's gone. So anyway, so let's look at a few more of these tools here. Now back in, uh, you know, I mentioned before that we have a ASO tool on our website. This is not the one I want to focus on, but I just thought I would mention it. So if you go to the Overpass uh, website, you go to development, we moved it to a less prominent place because we had other stuff we want to put on here. And we basically, we, we got the Google Play here. So if I wanted to say, uh, give me keyword suggestions based on Let's say your agent. I select my things. And I say I want to do one similar to mine. I give me 30 keywords. I go there and I click keyword search and it will give me a few suggestions, right? Which sounds really cool. It sounds like we're really smart here at Overpass. But what we did was we just put a wrapper around the tool that I mentioned in a previous video, which is done by, which is on GitHub. So if you're a Node.js person and you want to automate a lot of stuff, it's this tool over here called um, the App Store Optimization ASO by uh, Fakun Dulanu. Fakun Dulanu. I, I'm not sure what his real name is, but it's a really cool tool. So basically we did that and we just sort of wrapped it up there. So, so that's there if you need it. If you do your own Node.js stuff and you want to like automate a bunch of stuff and put a bunch of stuff through testing, which would be awesome, right? You could use that tool there too. And that uses like web scraping and stuff like that, right? Uh, but let's talk about some of the other tools. So one of the ones that, uh, that a lot of people use is uh, Google Keyword Planner. Now this is, Google Keyword Planners are used a lot to, for um, coming up with keyword research on websites. And it has a lot to do with, um, you know, one of the things that I was concerned with when I was starting out, everyone talking about ASO was talking about the Google Keyword Planner, but I was kind of concerned that that's web, that's not exactly the app store, that's not exactly Google Play, so is it the same thing? And I think, you know, basically the similarities are, you know, they're, they're very similar. You know, if somebody's gonna go do a search on the web, there's a good likelihood they're gonna do the search on Google Play too. So, you know, so that's one of the things. And it's got a lot of tools in here. So if you go, basically, if you go into Google AdWords, then you go to the tools section over here, you go to Keyword Planner, and you can put in a few uh, root keywords, and it will go through and generate some, some different variations based on that. And the nice thing about it is you get to see search history, competition, and things like that. So let's go, you got three options here. You can check volume and data. If you have some existing keywords, you can check for uh, new keywords based on a phrase. So let's say I go in here, I type in spy, uh, landing page, whatever. I go get ideas, and it's a little bit slow. Here we go. 
So then it will give me like a bunch of keyword suggestions or keyword phrase suggestions here. Uh, and then I can see, you know, based on you know, how many monthly searches it has, low, high, I can add it to a plan, I can export that. And it's, you know, but to me, that always seemed a bit, I think it just seems a bit more complicated. It was always more than I needed. So the tool that I use most of all when I'm doing some keyword research, when we're putting out a new app, is I'll use one called Uber Suggest. And that's over here. And it's a, it's a free tool, right? You don't even need to log in or anything like that. So if I go in here and I type in spy, it will go through and it will take the spy keyword and it will basically put it through Google Suggest Engine. So Google Suggest is, so here you can see spy, spy kids, spy whatever. So let me just show you. So if I go to Google here and I type in spy, it will give me the suggestions. It will give me like 10 of them, right? So what that will do is it will take, it will take that one and it will also take, you know, spy A, spy B. So it gives you those kind of suggestions, right? But so that what Uber Suggest does, it will just go through and do that for every single one of them and you just look down the list and choose, you know, choose which ones you like. And this is usually when I release an app and I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, I think of the app name and I think of, you know, a few different keywords, I'll, I'll put those in there because there may be things that I haven't thought of, right? And what I want to do, the whole goal of this is to find competitions that, or so find keywords that are searchable, like people are searching on them, but they're not, they have very low competition. All right, so you could take these keywords out, put them in like a spreadsheet, or you could you know, put them into the uh, Google Keyword Planner and then have a look to see how they do there, right? So ideally, there would be another Uber Suggest out there that uses Google Play. So, you know, if we were to go to, uh, let's go back to Google Play over here. And if I type in Spy, it will give me, you know, five suggestions there. If I type in Spy A, it will give me, you know, suggestions here. So ideally, there would be a, a keyword tool like that, but, but there isn't. So, so when it comes to keyword research, I don't do a whole lot. I mean, I'll do, you know, a little bit. I've tried lots of different tools. I spent, you know, I guess I spent a few thousand pounds on, on different keyword planner tools and everything like that. But in the end, I find that I just don't use them enough and I always come back to, to the free alternatives anyway. So anyway, I would love, so this is such, the reason I have been putting off this topic for so long is first of all, I find it incredibly boring, right? And secondly, because I'm not an expert in it, but you know, but it's something that I'm always, you know, keeping track of, right? I, I have no desire to be an SEO person or to be the person who, um, who's always thinking about keywords and search and things like that. I, I prefer just to produce products and put products out there and get people using them and hopefully get people to, to spread the words about them and everything like that. But this is something that we're also always thinking of. Every time we name a, uh, an app now, I'm always thinking about what would people be searching on and what would be similar to this and what would people, what, you know, what, would, what do they search on when they search for that, stuff like that. So anyway, I hope this has been a little bit helpful. Let me know what tools you guys think. Do you find the, the paid for ASO tools to be, be worth it? Do you, do you hire a consultant? Which is something I've been thinking about too, right? But you know, we're, we're doing okay. Like, we're, you know, everything seems to be going pretty well, All right? And when it comes to, for, in my opinion, when it comes to the app store, there's a lot of you know, really good advice out there. There's a lot of really good you know, consultants and everything, I, I assume, right? But when it comes to Google Play, it's a little bit more, you know, you know it's, it's just the rules are, are more flexible, right? So anyway, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what tools you guys use. That's it for today. Hey, if you, you know, this is one of the things, I always forget to say this. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you haven't liked or hated the video, you know what? Like, hate, whichever, let me know, right? And uh, please leave a comment. I love reading you guys' comments. I read them every day, right? They keep me going. Anyway, that's it for today. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.